In Good Shape, your health magazine on DW, featuring an interview with a different expert every week. I have an appointment with Dr. Peter Kosmail here in the Brandenburg Therapy Center for Spinal Injuries. Thanks for having me. So, there are different degrees of paraplegia, complete and incomplete. What's the difference? This is the impairment scale used internationally, known as ASIA for short. This distinguishes between incomplete and complete paraplegia. It's no doubt of interest to viewers to know that complete or incomplete does not refer to motor skills. Instead, we talk about incomplete paraplegia when bladder and rectal function has been partially retained, and complete paraplegia when individuals have lost control over these areas. To describe what viewers might think of as incomplete when someone still retains certain motor skills, we would talk about, for example, an incomplete paraplegia with partial retention of motor and sensory functions. So paraplegia changes your life, but there are completely different types of paraplegia. What are the most common causes? Accidents are, of course, the most frequent cause of paraplegia, but inflammation, different kinds of inflammatory changes, or autoimmune diseases can also lead to spinal cord injuries. And they can also result from tumors, of course. So there's quite a broad range of causes. So our image of someone jumping into water that's too shallow isn't typical. No, there are lots of other causes. For example, an elderly woman with osteoporosis might sustain an injury to the spinal cord from a sudden fracture of a vertebra. The spinal cord might be damaged by the vertebra, or parts of it might press on the cord. And if that happens, does paralysis occur all of a sudden? No, not necessarily. It can also be a slow process. If there's been considerable force, then that can result in immediate paralysis. That's obvious. But there are also slower processes, slight inflammation, which become more serious for a number of possible reasons and this can lead to a process of increasing paralysis. Not only the muscles are affected by paraplegia, but also inner organs like the bladder and colon. How does that affect everyday life? Well, if we're talking about individuals who have complete paraplegia, who no longer have any control over their bladder and colon, they can't control urination or excretion like other people. And that can lead to other major problems. These include secondary problems such as severe kidney and bladder damage. So what's the average life expectancy of paraplegic patients? Life expectancy has significantly improved thanks to modern forms of treatment that help us deal with these problems. In particular with the kidneys, difficulties emptying the colon, the skin, the increased incidence of fractures and thromboses, it isn't quite the same as normal life expectancy, but it's getting there. There are between four and seven years difference in terms of life expectancy depending on the position of the spinal cord injury. Whether it affects the lower extremities in the stomach area or whether it's higher up in the neck area. Dr. Kosmeo, what do you think about the exoskeleton? They are very innovative robots and can be a very useful therapeutic tool during physical rehabilitation. But right now they are only used in that area and they only make sense there at the moment.
It remains to be seen whether this tool can be improved to the extent that it might be able to make walking possible in everyday life. Time will tell. We're here in the Physical Rehabilitation Center. It's a sports hall. What do you do with your patients here? Here, the patients have to do specific exercises to build up strength, isometric exercises that are adjusted to their degree of impairment, adapted to how much strain the muscles can take. It's a targeted, repetitive training program that also allows patients to build up their muscles in addition to the other therapies that we offer here in the clinic. What are the aims of a physical rehabilitation program? The primary aim of both residential and walk-in rehabilitation treatments is to help people to become as self-sufficient as possible in their everyday lives. And this is possible with a multidisciplinary team, the help of various aids, and a therapeutic concept. Some paraplegics can learn to walk again. It's a very individual process. So you actually practice everyday tasks with the patients? We train patients to carry out real everyday tasks because they are a key part of our movements. And it allows patients to learn how to move properly in daily life, to learn how to carry out their everyday chores. For example, working in the kitchen or going to the toilet. And that's why these sequences of movements are also trained and simulated here. Real life situations too, like getting in and out of a car. That's also practiced here because it's an important step toward regaining self-sufficiency, gaining a new kind of mobility. So the transfer from wheelchair to car is essential there. What can we expect in the future? Will it be possible one day to heal paraplegia by getting nerve fibers to regrow so that patients can walk again? People have been trying to make advances in this field for years. The transplant of embryonic stem cells, for example. But up till now, they've had no success, and there's been no progress toward really promoting mobility. But a team at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology has pioneered another innovative approach. And initial results show that their method is safe. Further studies will have to reveal whether it will actually enable people to learn to walk again. You yourself use a wheelchair. You're a paraplegic. Did it take you a long time to get used to it and accept it as part of your life? Here in the clinic, we sometimes see really rapid progression. People who quickly accept their condition, manage well, and get on with their lives. Then there are other people who have greater problems accepting it. And in more familiar settings, including in a rehabilitation center like this one, it's possible to try to minimize that, to show that life in a wheelchair is possible. But every individual is different. Thanks a lot for joining me today. Thank you.